Uh, this is from Zuckerberg, uh, the founder and CEO of Meta, Facebook. Uh, quote, there's a lot of talk right now around how the U.S. government interacts with companies like Meta, and I want to be clear about our position. Our platforms are for everyone. We're about promoting speech and helping people connect in a safe and secure way. As part of this, we regularly hear from governments around the world and others with various concerns about public discourse and public safety. So, you know, that's the standard position, free speech and governments, governments express their concerns to us. In 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our team when we didn't agree. Ultimately, it was our decision whether or not to take content down, and we own our own decisions, including COVID-19 related changes we made, we made to our enforcement in the wake of this pressure. So note what he's saying here. One, there was pressure. There was pressure to take down explicit, specific content completely, in my view, inappropriate of the government to be exercising such pressure. None of the government's business. Um, however, as we've seen, the Supreme Court uh, has not taken my side of this, at least not yet. Th these cases might come back to the Supreme Court. But so far, the Supreme Court has basically said, yes, government can interact with social media, can put pressure, explicit or implicit, uh, on social media, to do it. But what's interesting is that Zuckerberg then says, right, he says, ultimately it was our decision whether or not our enforcement, in, uh, you know, uh, to take content down, and we own our decisions. So whether to succumb to the pressure or not, he takes responsibility for it. So while you can criticize Zuckerberg for taking, for, for acting on the pressure, he is admitting here that he could have turned the government down. Now, I don't know what the consequence of that would be. Nobody does. Um, but, you know, clearly, uh, the government did something unbelievably inappropriate. But the taking the content down was done by Zuckerberg and Meta. And in that sense, the attempt at censorship was done by the government. What Facebook did is not censorship not even censorship by proxy, whatever that means. What Facebook did was made a decision about pressures being placed on it and what it should and shouldn't do. Um, Zuckerberg goes on to say, um, I believe the government pressure was wrong and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Now, I agree with him. I agree completely that the government pressure on him was wrong. I think any government involvement in content is wrong, unless it's obviously and unequivocally a national security issue, and COVID was not. Um, but, you know, Facebook made a decision. It made a decision as a private company facing pressure from the government about its own viability. Uh, the censorship is the government's action. And here, I think the Supreme Court is wrong. This pressure that the, that, that, the, that, the, that the government is placing on social media companies, or placed, still placing, on social media companies is wrong. It's, that pressure is a violation of the First Amendment. That attempt to censor should be censored. That attempt to censor should be stopped by the Supreme Court. Um, so uh, Zuckerberg goes on. I also think we made some choices that the benefit of hindsight and new information we wouldn't make today. Like I said to our teams at the time, I feel strongly that we should not compromise our content standards due to pressure from any administration in either direction. And we're ready to push back if something like this happens again. This is the other issue, right? We talked about we talked about when this was all happening in 2021, 2022. Moderating social media is not easy. 
every platform has standards. Now you could say the standard is anything legal is okay, but I'm not sure that's the wise business decision. I'm not sure that's the right business decision. Uh, you know, if, if you're trying to appeal to a certain audience, it might not be appropriate to let the neo-Nazis on your platform, you know, yell even when it's legal. Platforms have to make decisions about content. One decision could be to allow it all, but it's not probably the most, um, the best decision for the business. It's as if, you know, shareholder wealth maximization, in terms of profits, in terms of growth, in terms of success. Making those decisions is difficult. It's not easy. Particularly when you've got a government breathing down your throat, either putting pressure on you, hauling you in front of Congress to uh, lamb blast you, hauling you in front of Congress, and remember this is the left and the right doing this, hauling you in front of Congress to tell you that you're going to be regulated and you're going to be controlled. Very difficult. And what Zuckerberg is saying is, look, we made mistakes, as businesses do when facing complex situations. I, wouldn't make, I would make the decision differently today if I had that option. I wouldn't do it the way I did it back then. I would do, I would do it differently. That's great. Good for him. But that's exactly what you want. Failure happens. And businesses are going to test. They're going to try in complex situations to figure out what the right policy is. And looking back, Zuckerberg and I say, it was wrong what happened then. Wouldn't do it again. This time, if it happens again, I'm better prepared both to stand up to the government and to be more public about what is going on. And that is cool and that is great. And that leaves me to have some hope about you know, what happens to free speech in America in the future. If people like Musk and Zuckerberg and others are just willing to speak and to talk about what's going on and to stand up to the government, then I, I, I think that is going to have a massive, a massive uh, positive impact on, you know, protecting free speech and therefore on our world and on our success in this world. Here's a second, here's a, the next paragraph, which is another issue. And then I have a tw funny tweet from Trump regarding this in a minute. In a separate situation, the FBI warned us about a potential Russian disinformation operation about the Biden family and uh, Burisma in the lead up to the 2020 election. That fall, when we saw a New York Post story reporting on corruption allegations involving then Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden's family, we sent that story to fact checkers for review and temporarily demoted it while waiting for a reply. It's since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian disinformation, and in retrospect, we shouldn't have demoted the story. We've changed our policies and processes to make sure this doesn't happen again. For instance, we no longer temporarily demote things in the U.S. while waiting for fact checkers. Again, they make a mistake. It backfires on them. They adjust. It's exactly what businesses do. This is a business. It's exactly what you know, a tech company does. It's exactly what you'd expect a tech CEO to do. Now, this is, of course, the Biden laptop, which social media suppressed at the time, although everybody knew about the laptop within days, so the suppression didn't really work. Uh, although it was couched with this aura of maybe it's fake news, we don't really know. Um, and, you know, he's saying here that, uh, you know, they, 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 again, will not do it again, and they're not doing it again. So the story is not demoted. Well, it's at fact checkers. I guess it gets demoted if the fact checkers say, oh, no, no, this is a false story. It's a bad story. Get, you know, not good. Um, so, um, yeah, this is all good stuff. It's good that they're learning from their mistakes. I don't blame them for making the mistakes. The mistakes, it, you know, you try running a company. You try running a company this size. 
you try running a company this size with the kind of pressures, the kind of pressures that are constantly being put on a company like Meta. Um, so good, good for Zuckerberg. Um, here's a, related to this last paragraph, here's a tweet from Donald Trump. Or it's not a tweet, it's a truth, whatever they call it. Anyway, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, Trump says, Zuckerberg admits that the White House pushed to suppress Hunter Biden laptop story and much more. In other words, the 2020 presidential election was rigged. Fox News, New York Post, Representative Laura Lee, House Judiciary Committee, da da da. I'll read that again, and let's see if you can tell what's wrong with this. Zuckerberg admits that the White House pushed to suppress Hunter Biden's laptop story. In other words, the 2020 presidential election was rigged. What's the problem with that? What's the problem? This is a, a semi-intelligence test. <laughs> um... All right, I see nobody's got, nobody, nobody's even attempting to answer the question. Nobody's attempting to answer the question. Um, the problem with it is that who was in the White House in 2020? Who was, who was in the White House when the Hunter Biden laptop story broke? 2020. No, problem is not blaming the loss on the laptop. The problem is that Trump was in the White House. So basically Trump is saying, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase what he wrote. Zuckerberg admits that the Trump White House pushed to suppress Hunter Biden's laptop story. Trump was in the White House in 2020, leading up to the election. He was, I know it's hard to believe, and it seems like a very long time ago, he was president of the United States. It was, if the White House asked Meta to suppress the story, as Donald Trump is saying, it means he, Donald Trump, asked them to suppress the story. Now, that's not what Trump means, the FBI, that's the deep state and all that stuff. But it's still funny that uh, a 79-year-old candidate of the Republican Party um, <laughs> is this confused this confusing, right? This confused, this uh, can, can misspeak like this, right? It's, it's just, he's not, he's not completely there. And what's hilarious about this is, I thought that there was some buddy who read his tweets before they went out, you know? But maybe there never have been anybody reading the tweets before they go out, maybe it really is him. All right, final paragraph of Zuckerberg's letter. Um, Let's see if we can, uh, yeah, enlarge it. Okay, apart from content moderation, I want to address the contributions I made during the last presidential cycle to support electoral infrastructure. This is how I present it. The idea here was to make sure local election jurisdictions across the country had the resources they needed to help people vote safely during a global pandemic. I made these contributions through the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. They were designed to be nonpartisan, spread across urban, rural, and suburban communities. Still, despite the analysis I've been showing, uh, I've been showing otherwise, I know that some people believe this work benefited one party over the other, the Democratic Party, in other words. My goal is to be neutral and not play a role one way or the another, or to even appear to be playing a role. So I don't plan on making a similar, a similar contribution in this cycle. And I think what he's saying here is he plans to not make any political contributions this cycle. Not to Democrats and not to Republicans and to appear and be as neutral as he possibly, uh, as he possibly can. So um, I think, again, probably good. Certainly, I think his shareholders, I think his board of directors, should be very happy about this. I, I, I don't think um, shareholders benefit when particular companies uh, become affiliated and associated with particular political parties. So I think that's, that, is all, that is all good uh, uh, for shareholders, which is, that's his job. His job is to make money for shareholders. 
Um, all right, let's see. So, bottom line, uh, the U.S. government under Biden, and let me just note that I believe under previous administrations as well, but certainly under Biden, during COVID, um, unsurprising to anybody, and, and, and things that we already knew, put significant pressure on social media companies to take down uh, certain posts uh, regarding COVID and to, you know, uh, uh, take off or to, uh, what do you call it, suppress certain information that they deemed misinformation, that they deemed inappropriate. Um, and, and that they put this pressure and that ultimately uh, some of these platforms, including Meta, succumbed to that pressure and actually took down uh, some information. That, I think, is old news. The new news, the good news, the positive, is that Zuckerberg here is taking a public stand. This letter is made public that he will not succumb to such pressure in the future. That is that he will stand up and he will make it public and he will, he will put it out there. I, I hope that's right. I hope that's true. Uh, and, uh, and I hope we can expect Zuckerberg to, uh, to live up to that standard. And I think if he does that, and, and I think Elon Musk seems to be committed to that and others um, hopefully will be committed to that. TikTok, of course, is going away. Uh, but others will be committed to it, then uh, I think we will have not, you know, I don't think Meta is going to be the kind of platform where you can post anything. I think Meta will have its own standards for what gets posted and what it's not as appropriate. Meta will take down posts that it finds inappropriate. Meta will suppress, the algorithm will suppress certain information relative to other information. But it will be Meta's decision on what to suppress and what not based on its business evaluation based on its business philosophy, based on its business ideas. I mean, even Elon, who claims everything is, everything is okay on, on Twitter, it, 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 that's just not true. Clearly, he has some standards. You might agree with those standards. You might disagree with those standards. But every single platform has to have some standards for moderation. And we'll get to Telegram in a minute where there are probably no standards for moderation, so, and, and maybe that is the cause of the problems um, the CEO uh, has with the French authorities. Uh, we'll get to that. But uh, if, if the result is going to be that we have uh, people like Mark Zuckerberg starting to stand up to governments and uh, uh, starting to be open and, and, and uh, provide information to us, the public, about what is going on, I, I think it's a huge win for America. It's a huge win for freedom. It's a huge win uh, for us all.